Welcome back to Pedalbox, where after two years of stalling, we're finally attaching our shifter to our gearbox. And because these won't work, we've ordered some nice long three meter shift cables. Loyal viewers might remember about a year or so ago we tried taking the shifter apart and reverse engineering it a bit to try and figure out a way to send the original short uh, shifter cables instead of out the front of it because obviously in the original car they were going toward the gearbox in front of the shifter we tried reversing everything to send them out the back instead hoping that we could get enough length out of these cables to make them work. Unfortunately that also meant sending the cables in the front of the gearbox instead of the back and it was just too much complexity we couldn't figure out like the mechanical sort of intricacies of you know, how do we modify these ends and how do we modify the hookups on everything and how do we modify the tower on the, sh on the gearbox and everything else. So we kind of gave up. Either it was too hard of a problem or we were too dumb. Either way, we took the easy but slightly more expensive option, so thank you patrons, of just ordering some much longer shifter cables. These are about three meters long and we've ordered them with compatible ends we've been able to reuse. On this end here, we've got one of the original uh, gearbox um, like arm bracket holdy clippy things, so that's the technical term. And on the other end, these just thread into the um, fitments on the underside of the uh, of the shifter. And with this, we can come out the front of the shifter as normal. And all we do is we just put a big radius in and send it all the way back along the car. And then we hoop it around the other end into the gearbox. The whole thing is kind of this shape, but that does work really well, or it should at least. We hope that's the plan anyway, because these were relatively expensive so we're going to go and get the shifter in figure out the routing for these because obviously we've done it approximately we've sent the um, original shifter cables through but there's nothing quite like testing with the real thing so we're going to try and get this all offered up now and see how it all goes together so we've been flailing around under the car now for a little while i'm a little bit soggy and a little bit cold from the blocks but other than that i think i'm all right so we've managed to get the cables end to end not installed exactly right because obviously we haven't got all the holes in our center console and everything that we need to route them properly but from running them roughly where they need to be we've worked out the cables are pretty much the right length they bend in all the right places just enough just enough to work and the ends do seem to fit all of the attachments that we need to make them connect to both ends at the shifter and the gearbox so Big relief there, given how expensive these were and how long we've been waiting for them. We have figured out one small problem though. So we've punched out a couple of holes in the front of our shifter unit here, and unfortunately it looks like our plan to bend them round it directly in front isn't quite going to work. Now you might remember this centre air vent that's meant to keep our feet nice and warm when it's cold, and I'm not sure if this is an oversight on our part or just some optimism, I can't remember, but one way or another, this is really quite close to the front of the shifter, so our original idea of having the cables come forward out of the shifter, then immediately bend down here, probably not going to work. The radius is just a little too tight, and the tails on this behind where they go through the bulkhead are just a little bit too long. So instead of trying to send both of the cables down together immediately behind the vent, we're going to split them. We're going to go one cable either side, and we're just going to use much bigger hoops all the way around. It does mean that the cables are going to be kind of in the footwell areas, but given that the alternative is that they're probably impossible to install, that still seems like a win. And that leaves us with two jobs for now. We've got to install this end of the cables into the shifter, and we've got to punch some holes so that we can take the shifter and cable system all fully assembled and run them down through here into our center tunnel and back toward the gearbox. We've got the gear stick back in the vise, obviously opened it up and started attaching the cables, and one of them is almost perfect. We've got the short one on here, which has the very limited amount of throw for side to side, so when the gear stick turns, this moves backwards and forwards, and that one works okay. Unfortunately, both of these cables have been made the same length at this end, which is a little bit concerning. Um, when we have enough throw on the uh, forwards and backwards motion uh, onto this ball joint here, ball joint goes through fine. We actually drilled the old mounting out, which is down here. So remove that completely, drift it out, 
all good and we just put this ball joint in that came with the cable but we had to extend with an extra piece of m6 threaded rod and a join nut with some extra jam nuts on and even doing that the amount that this withdraws into the cable only leaves three or four threads left on the end of this rod so i'm a little disappointed with that i expected better um, because most of this threaded end gets pulled down into the sleeve in the cable which doesn't seem right so that's going to be an interesting one to try and work out now we need to go to the other end of the cables and see what they're like and how they're going to line up on the other end to the gearbox well, connecting this up to the gearbox is going to be a nightmare because what we've received is not quite what we asked for. This is the original cable that comes out. This is the ball joint that goes onto the top of the tower. And this just fits onto the end and grips onto this uh, M6, roughly M6 threaded uh, rod here. I think it's M6 by one. I could be wrong. Um, but ultimately, that's what it needs to do. This needs to sit on the end and the distance between this ball joint and this flange is what is critical to fit onto our gearbox. Now what we've received is substantially longer, so that's full extension on the old one and that is almost full extension on this one, although it is onto a very short throw, this is on the side to side throw. We actually need to use the other one for the forwards and back throw which is what's going to give us the, um, the issue because that has much further travel than the side to side motion selecting between first and second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth position and reverse. So because flange to flange and point to point are so wildly different, there's no thread down here for us to clip this ball joint onto, which is really, really annoying. If we go all the way in and we push this to the other end, we end up in much the same problem where we can't actually attach this because the threads on this end only go about that far along. The rest of it is smooth because it doesn't need to be. You pull this back, it opens up the springs, they clip onto the end, you release it, and now it holds onto the rod really nicely. We don't have that on this one because there is no thread where we need to attach it. Now for something that I bought as a custom made piece with these example cables sent with, I am a little disappointed. The only way we're going to be able to salvage this is to cut the thread off, which is what we've done on this one, and we're going to have to shorten this down a little bit further still, and then weld a new piece of threaded rod onto the end. That carries a lot of risks because there is a big plastic tube that runs through the centre of here that we don't want to melt by putting a huge amount of heat into here. And what's worse, for the length we actually need, if we put this down there, we have to get this almost right up to the end. So we can't go too far down. If we put it too far down, then we're going to have all sorts of problems mounting the threaded rod onto the end of this. It's going to catch inside. It's going to go really badly. So we're going to have to shorten this as little as possible, put the threaded rod on, then attach this then see if it will even work and give us enough throw in the car. So, not particularly thrilled, but we're going to try and salvage this because one way or another, as custom-made cables, these are scrap if we don't use them. That's one cable done. The threaded rod is on the end. We've got it as long as possible at the moment. We can always take a little bit more off if we need to adjust this shorter, but I'm really hoping that we don't. If anything, we'll need to make this a little bit longer, but it looks ugly. It is strong. It is the only way we can make sure that this works. So we can actually test out whether this alignment and this geometry of cables and shifters and everything else is even going to function. And I really, really need to check that, particularly if we're going to have to buy yet another set of cables. So one done, one to go. Now the problem we have with this cable is the mounting flange is offset. It's about two inches, 50 mil or so further forward. But the difference in alignment between the pins isn't that much. So the distance between the flange and the pin is much lower on this cable, which does our side to side movement on the gear stick. So we can't actually remove enough of this, cab of this um, cable, the, the, the rod on the end, the threaded rod, and weld something on because this tube, the sleeve that it moves inside of, is still too long. So we're going to have to try and cheat it a little bit, make another bracket even still that sits further back 
uh, yeah, make another bracket that sits in line with the other mounting flange on the gearbox bracket just to try and test to see if this alignment works. Now, fortunately, I've got a little piece of steel which is going to drill some holes in, attach it onto that, run them through, and see what it's like. I'm hoping it's not going to flex too much. We can weld some brackets onto that to make sure that it won't flex. But for the time being, we've just got to try and get this alignment to see if we can even make this cable work now. Here's our control cable bracket that we took off the gearbox and I've added this little plate on, a couple of little tacks and some 16mm holes. This one goes through the original point on the left, this one controls the forwards and backwards. This is the one that we're having trouble with because there is a good inch and a half that we can't use or we can't mount to with this cable. And you see if it goes through like this and mounts all the way through here, it sticks quite a long way through the back. You can see it just measuring off the back of the car. Whereas if we're going through this section and we mount it to there, we save ourselves a good two and a half, maybe two inches, so 50, 60 mil. So we're gonna thread this into place, put it on, and hopefully we'll be able to move the tower with the gear stick. I'm not gonna thread it all the way to the front yet. Still got a couple of holes to go through, but we wanna see whether this works before we fight it all the way in and then have to pull it all the way back out again to make some more modifications. I did need to trim the uh, threaded portion down, which is a pretty reasonable modification. I'll allow that, that's not a problem. Can't get this back off now. So we'll get this wound up put on the gearbox and see if it works. Well, it's another new day because getting those cables through was an absolute nightmare and it took us the better part of an hour and a half. And by that point it was dark, but we did do a quick test fit and they weren't quite in the right place. The piece of metal that we'd welded across the back of here wasn't quite giving us the right angle. The uh, internal cable, which does the left right shifting on the gear stick was just sat too high up. So we were having to put a lot of pressure on to get it to clip onto the tower, which is no good. So we've remade our bracket, moved it forward, twisted it round. You can see it is a little bit more off axis compared to this one and it's shifted forward slightly and that should give us the right alignment so we can actually connect up the gear stick onto the cables. The bracket's on the gearbox and you can see we just need to adjust this to get it in the right place. We'll tighten those up properly once we've got the ends on. Now with the ends on, we can see how they work with the gear shifter in the front. So if Chris just throws it through the gears from first to sixth, we can see how this does. It seems to be doing reasonably. And with that, we have a working gear shift in excess of 100 episodes after we first put this particular engine in this chassis, which is probably at least 50 more than it realistically should have been. I'm hoping that this will get us through the IVA. I think it will. It's not too difficult to get it into any given gear. It is just a little bit more stiff than I would perhaps like. As Chris says, I think it's gonna be very, very tiring after a full day on a track in its current configuration. But unfortunately, that is the nature of trying to estimate things. If I was to get these cables made up again, which I might do at some point, I might have to if it ends up being really, really tiring to drive, I'd probably get them flange to flange an extra 20 centimeters. Because while there's no point where it's really kinking round something and really trying to bend and put too much pressure on the inner. I think expanding the radii on the back here certainly would help a little bit more just being a little bit wider. So that's probably all we're going to get done for this episode. The light is fading fast once again today and this has taken a lot longer. I was bargaining on these cables taking about half a day to put in because they should all be right, right from the builder, but they were not and uh, we have paid the price for that. But the other change we could potentially do is swap out those factory ends to proper rod ends, which might be the other winning move, again, to try and relieve some of the stiffness in the uh, joints at the back here. We can just take this out. Next time we take the engine out, drill those two um, little ball pivots out and put some rod ends in instead. And that should solve a little bit more of the problem. 
But in the meantime, before we take this engine out again, there is still a lot more to do. As I say, we will see you in the next episode. You can check out shop.pedalbox.show as well as patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow where you will also get a discount as a patron at the shop. If you haven't already, subscribe, check out the rest of the videos on this build and all of our other stuff, and we'll see you in the next one.